We're going to be taking a special 865 mile trip along 72 and 76. Come on, let's go. Alright everyone, today we're going to be doing US Highway 72 and 76 westbound. Now, the reason I'm combining these two highways is because they both end at each other, making it one long continuous highway. Also, this would be US 72's westbound half of its reboot, so that'll be fun. And along this 865 mile route, we're going to be doing 565 and seeing a roller coaster of control cities. So, let's get started with the video. But first, you're watching The Dirt Pile, where I make highways content on all sorts of different topics. If you've been enjoying it, be sure to hit that like button. And if you've been really enjoying it, be sure to smash that subscribe button so you're notified on all future videos. And if you really want to help out the channel, become a member today where you get custom cool emojis, early access to future videos, along with one free exit request per month. And if you don't want to become a member, you can always just pay $3 for a intersection request in future videos. Those highways will be listed down in the description below. And I'll make sure to shout you out when that video releases. So let's get on with the highway. As we can see here, this is a map of the two highways. As 72 runs from Memphis to Chattanooga, while 76 runs from Chattanooga to Wilmington. And the colored portions is the part of the two routes that I've been on. So with that, I'm going to be talking about westbound 72 and 76. So we begin here in Wrightsville Beach, where US 76 begins as a, a two-lane road here, and it parallels the Atlantic Ocean for a little bit. And then here is where US 76 turns onto a causeway and crosses over into mainland North Carolina, still in Wrightsville Beach. And here we are meeting with US Highway 74, and 74 and 76 are going to have a concurrency here. And here is where US 76 splits off from US Highway 74, and it's going to be joining with US 17 as they're going to be heading through downtown Wilmington. And if you want to check out my US 17 series, it's in the top right corner here because I recently just made one. It was really fun to make. And on the other side of Wilmington, US 74 and US 76 are splitting off from US Highway 17. And like I said in my US 17 video, it should not be two Brunswick County beaches. 17 should be signed South or Myrtle Beach, not an entire county's beaches. Oh, again, see that. But meanwhile, we're signed west for Whiteville and Lumberton. Here we are in Interstate 140, and it gets great control cities. And if you want to check out a video on Interstate 140, I recommend checking out the Xavier's 456 version here in the top right corner. Here is our first major junction outside of Wilmington, and it's North Carolina Highway 87. And whenever I do a North Carolina Highway 87 video, I'm going to be talking about its control cities here. Oh boy, here is the NC dot we all know and love today. US 76 is signed west for Chadbourne and Fair Bluff. I get Chadbourne, it's because it's known for its annual strawberry festival, but Fair Bluff is literally the last town in North Carolina. You know what that should be instead? It should be Mullins, or Marion, or Florence, not Fair Bluff. NC Dot, why do you have to be so provincial on stuff? Ugh. Outside of Fair Bluff, we finally get our first mileage sign with Lawrence on the bottom line. Yay! And here we are entering into the state of South Carolina. Are we gonna need the meme sign? I hope not. <laughs> here we are meeting with South Carolina Highway 9, and we're gonna be concurrent with it as 9 North is gonna be signed for North Myrtle Beach and Myrtle Beach. And let us see what 9 South is signed for. Whoa! This is one ridiculously good mileage sign. We get Mullins on the top line and South Carolina 9 is signed for Charlotte? Wow. That is one huge jump. And Charlotte's not even in South Carolina. It's in North Carolina. So this is a rare SC.W. Here we split it off from South Carolina Highway 9. And South Carolina 9 is still getting signed for Charlotte. That is awesome. 
Here in Mullins, we're meeting with South Carolina 41 and 917. And South Carolina 41 is getting signed for Charleston, which is awesome. And 917 and 41 are getting signed for Dillon. Here in Marion, we're meeting with US Highway 501, and it's getting signed north for Dillon. And south for Conway. Now, like I said in my 501 video, that should be Myrtle Beach, not Conway. Here in downtown Marion, 76 is now getting signed for Florence, which is absolutely awesome. And this junction here with 501 Business is also awesome. So this here is all around SC.W number 2. And here we get a one liner with just Florence, which I think is an alright choice. Florence is pretty huge. Oh, here is US Highway 301. And suddenly, 76 West does not have access to US 301 North, which kind of makes sense. Here is where US 301 splits off from US Highway 76, and you can take South Carolina 327 over an Interstate 95 into the Florence Buckies, which is a place that I have been to. How many times do I have to see these stupid mileage signs? This is what, like the third one in the past three months now? First, we've seen one on US 17 alternate. Next, we saw one on US 501. And now we're seeing one here on US 76? SC Dot, what in the world are you doing? Why in the world are you signing Florence from five miles away? You know other cities exist outside of Florence. This mileage time should be Florence and Sumter. Sumter. The next major city. No one's going to the Florence airport. No one. So why in the world are you signing it? Uh, SC Dot, I can't believe I have to reward you this. Come on, step up your game. Here in Florence, we're meeting with US Highway 52. And we're now signed for Timminsville. Ugh, even though Timminsville is a quite reasonable town, it's not, no one's heard of it. That definitely should be Sumter from here. People's heard of Sumter, South Carolina, not Timminsville. Here we are meeting with Business US Interstate 20 as it takes you over to proper Interstate 20 as Interstate 20 continues west from here. On the outskirts of Florence, we're meeting with Interstate 95, we get signed north for Fayetteville, which is awesome. And we can see in the distance that it gets signed south for Savannah, which is also awesome. Oh boy, we get another stupid one-liner. We get Timminsville from four miles away. It should be Timminsville and Sumter. Just Timminsville by itself. Ugh, against SC Don. Ugh. Here in Timminsville, we're meeting with South Carolina Highway 403. And we're now signed for Sumter and Columbia. That, that's the way you get back on track, South Carolina. Awesome. Here in Sumter, meeting with US Highway set 378. And we're going to be concurrent with it as we head towards Columbia. Hey, it's US 401 once again. Woohoo! And it's signed for Darlington, which I think is a good choice. We're also meeting US Highway 15, which gets signed for Bishopville. And personally, I might, i like to see that Bishop film, but I'll probably talk more in depth in it when we get to that US-15 collab here in a couple weeks. And then outside of Conway, we get another mileage town, and we get Columbia on the bottom line from 44 miles away, which is awesome. Here we are meeting with US Highway 521 on the outskirts of Conway, and 521 is signed for Camden. There's a Camden, South Carolina? I mean... I believe this Camden is pretty sizable, so I don't see why not 521 can be signed for it. While 76 and 378 are still signed west for Columbia. Here we meet US 601 and we're still signed west for Columbia, while 601 gets signed north for Camden. No, that should be Lugoff. Lugoff is literally bigger than Camden by 2200 people and it's where we meet US Highway 1. So, why in the world is Camden being signed on US 601? Is it because you favor 521 over US 1 SE dot? Come on, sign Lugoff. 
anyways, here in the Columbia area, we mean with Interstate 77, and 77 gets Austin Control Cities, North War Charlotte, and South War Charleston, and Spartanburg. Personally, I like to see Greenville on there because Greenville is the bigger city of this Greenville Spartanburg metro area, but Spartanburg is still an alright choice. Here we meet US Highway 1 and we're going to be concurrent with it as we head through downtown Columbia. And here's a cool picture of the Columbia skyline here as we head into downtown. And this is where US 76 turns off of US 378 and US 1 as US 76 is being heading west towards Interstate 126. And here on Business Route Interstate 126, we're meeting with US 21 and 176 and 321, and they're signed for Chester and Brock Hill. And here on Interstate 126, we get the exit for the Riverbank Zoo, and we're going to be joining with Interstate 26 signed west for Spartanburg, which I think is an alright choice. Personally, I like to see Greenville, but Spartanburg's still pretty big too, like I said earlier. <laughs> And this picture here was taken by me, and after a short concurrency with Interstate 26, 76 is now joining with US Highway 176, and apparently SC Dot has decided not to sign one, but two control cities for 76 and 176. Two! SC Dot, why are you signing two unincorporated communities? These places should not be here. You know what this should be? Irmo and Newberry, or if you want two separate cities for both 76 and 176, do Union and Newberry, not two unincorporated communities. Come on, we're in South Carolina, not Virginia. Ugh. Anyways, here we are splitting off from US Highway 176, as now 76 is now signed for Chapin. Here in the town of Little Mountain, South Carolina, we're now signed for Prosperity and Newberry, which I think are good choices. And here we get a one-liner with just Newberry from seven miles away. Here we are meeting with South Carolina Highway 34, and we're now signed for Clinton and Winsboro. Alright. Here we are in Clinton, and we're now signed for Lawrence, while the road here takes you over to Greenville, which is an awesome choice. And we're now meeting with South Carolina Highway 14, which gets signed for Great Court. And we're now signed for Anderson, which is an awesome choice here too. And here we are meeting with US Highway 25. And 25 and 76 are going to have a currency here. And, wow, we get a one-liner for Greenville? This is awesome. Yes, I know that US 76 doesn't go to Greenville, but US 25 does, and this is an awesome choice for picking a favorite route. But we come back from reality as we split off from US-25, we get no information for our next control city. Instead, we just get a whole bunch of information for different academies and ret retreat centers. Why? Anyways, here we are meeting with US Highway 178 and its sign is for Due West. Hey, SE Dot, I think you're getting your directions mixed up, because Due West is not west of here, it's east. Here in Honeyoth Path, we're now signed for Bealton, as South Carolina 252 will take you over to Anderson. But here in Bealton, we're meeting with South Carolina Highway 20, and we're now signed for Anderson once again. Here in Anderson, we're meeting with US Highway 29, and we're going to be concurrent with it as we head through the town. And here's where US-29 splits off from us, as we're going to continue now towards Clemson. Here's where US-178 splits off from us, outside of Anderson. And we're now going to be concurrent with South Carolina Highway 28. Here we are meeting Interstate 85, which gets great control cities of Greenville and Atlanta. And let us see what we're signed for on Interstate 85. Oh, we're not signed for Clemson, which is an alright choice, because Clemson's a pretty sizable city, and it's also where the University of Clemson is, so, great choice, SC Dot. But our next mile of time, we get Pendleton on the top line, Clemson as our secondary, and Seneca as our primary. 
I mean, Seneca's still pretty big, but Clemson's a good choice too. Here in Clemson, we're meeting with Gus Howie at 123. And we're gonna be concurrent with it here. And if we follow Gus 76 and 123, we come here to this road here, we'll take you over to Clemson University. And if you follow that road, it will take you over to South Carolina 93 here. And if you follow South Carolina 93, it will take you over to Williamson Drive. And if you take a left here on the Williamson Drive, it will take you over to the Clemson Memorial Stadium. Go Tigers! Yay! And we have our first request of the video. This one was made by Ryan Bolton. She wanted to see a view of Clemson University from Lake Hartwell. Sadly, you can't really see it from US 76 proper, so I had to hop on to South Carolina at 93 to be able to see the stadium and part of the campus. So thank you for the request. Anyways, here in Seneca, we're now signed for Westminster from 8 miles away, which I think is an alright choice. I mean, anything in Georgia is still a bit too far from here. Here we split off from US Highway 123, as US 76 is now signed for Clayton and Long Creek. We are now entering into the state of Georgia here in this awesome part of South Carolina and Georgia. And here we are outside of Clayton, and we're meeting with US 23 and 441. And we're going to have a short currency with it as we head through Clayton. Here we are splitting off from Yes Highway 23 and 441. And we're getting signed west for Iowa City. Oh boy, but once we split off from Yes 23 and Yes 441, we get Blairsville on the bottom line from 46 miles away. You know what the population of Blairsville is? 616 people! So why in the world is Georgia signing a place with only 600 people as her primary? Uh, but it gets even worse. This is after we meet Georgia Highway 75. We get a stupidest three-line mileage sign ever. I get Highway C as our uh, top line because it has a thousand people and we're about to enter into town. But the population of Young Harris is only 810 people. And you want to know what the population of Hayesville, North Carolina is? It's only 470 people. So apparently Georgia has not become inconsistent, but has switched our primary from a 620 person town to a 470 person town in the state of North Carolina. You know what the total, total population of this mile of China is? It's only 2200 people! So why in the world is Georgia sending a three-line mile of China with a total population of 2,300 people. No! You know what this should be? Highway C, Young Harris, and Murphy. I know that's slightly bigger than Hayesville, but still, people's heard of Murphy, and Murphy's a major junction in western North Carolina. No need for Hayesville! But in our next mile of China, we finally get Murphy as our primary. This is great! But after going through Hiwa C, we still get Young's Har we get Young Harris as our top line, and we get Blairsville once again. What happened to Murphy? I want to see Murphy. Here we are meeting with US Highway 129 and 19 here in Blairsville, and we're gonna be having a currency with it as we head through the city. Here we split off from US Highway 19 and. Georgia 129? What happened to US Highway 129? Not only is Georgia bad at signing control cities in its northern part of the state, it's also bad with error shields. Fix that error shield. But the two highways are getting signed north for Murphy, and we're getting signed for Blue Ridge, which I think are good choices. But our next mileage time, we get Blue Ridge on the top line and Ella J as her primary, which is even better. But our next mile of time, we get Morganton on the top line, and Blue Ridge comes back. So, eh, I'd prefer to see Ella J, but Blue Ridge is still pretty sizable for this part of the state. But here in Blue Ridge, we get a one-liner with Atlanta on the bottom line. Atlanta. Wow. 
US 76 does not go to Atlanta, but this is a pretty awesome one liner. Now, this is how you do a one line mileage sign, Georgia. You get a rare Georgia.w here. Alright, here we split off from Georgia Highway 5, as Georgia 5 is the one that takes you all the way down to the Atlanta metro area. While well, 76 continues west of here towards US 41 and uh, Dalton, Georgia. In fact, we get J Dalton our bottom line at 37 miles away, and we meet US 411 in Chatsworth. Here we are meeting with US Highway 411, and we're just signed for Chatsworth. Eh, I prefer to see Dalton here instead. Here is where US 76 and Georgia Route 52 splits off from US Highway 411 as they're now heading towards Dalton and Chattanooga. Here we meet US Highway 41 and US 40 76 is me concurrent with US 41 for the rest of the day's journey. So I just decided to skip most of the route and just show the Tennessee welcome sign here in a bit. And here is the Tennessee welcome sign in the very back here in front of this fall foliage. I better hope we not have to use the Tennessee meme sign for US 72. Crossing my fingers. And this is where US 76 ends, and this is where US 72 Western begins. So, even though T dot does not specify this is the start of US 72 Western, we are starting that portion of the highway. Anyways, a little ways up the road, we now get our first reassurance show for US 72, and we also get a mention of US Highway 64. Yay! Here is where US Highway 11 splits off from 64, 72, and 41. I also made a series on US Highway 11 earlier this year, so if you want to check it out, it's in the top right corner here. Here, here we meet Interstate 24 for the first time, and certainly not for the last, while we get Reassurance Shield for both 41, 72, and this weird looking shield for US 64. Here we are crossing over the Tennessee River, and we get one magnificent view of Interstate 24 in these mountains here. Seriously, that looks stunning. Here is where US 41 splits off from US 64 and 72 here in Jasper, Tennessee, as 41 is now signed north for Dunlap. Here is where US 64 splits off from Interstate 24 as it's signed for Chattanooga and Nashville, and let us see what this sign up ahead is for for US 72. Are you kidding me? Why in the world is T dot trying to be like NC dot and being provincial? South Pittsburgh is literally the last town here in Tennessee. This should be Huntsville, because US 72 goes to Huntsville, and Huntsville's Alabama's biggest city. No need for South Pittsburgh. But here in South Pittsburgh, 72 is now signed west for Scottsboro. No, Huntsville. Let me give it to you straight. Huntsville. Anyways, here we are entering into the state of Alabama along with the city of Bridgeport. And oh boy, Al Dutt's following along with T Dot and avoiding Huntsville. Here in Bridgeport, we're signed for Stevenson. Stevenson's literally the next town over. This should be Huntsville. Al Dutt, sign Huntsville. It's your biggest city. Why are you avoiding it? But at the very next exit in Stevenson, we're now signed for Scottsboro once again. Yes, I know Scottsboro is a pretty big city, but you know what's the biggest city in Alabama? Huntsville. But at the next mileage, or at the next exit, we're now signed for Guntersville. Are you kidding me? Why in the world are you avoiding Huntsville? This is making me angry. But finally, we get a one-line mileage sign with Huntsville. Where was it at those exits we just saw? Ugh, Al Don. Ugh. And then our next mileage sign, we get Huntsville still on the bottom line, which is the correct choice. And we've got another request, US 72 and Jordan Road. This request was made by Ryland Television. He wanted to see this intersection because he uses this road to get home every day. So 
Thank you for the request. Here in Huntsville, US 72 is split off from US 72 Alternate and Interstate 565. And we're going to be following Interstate 565 here because it gives me nostalgia because I grew up in the Huntsville, or I lived in the Huntsville area for eight years of my life. Our first major exit here on Interstate 565, we get US 231 and US 431. And it gets just a whole lot of Kentucky treatments here. That kind of makes sense because we are in the downtown Huntsville-ish area. While 565 just gets no, no control city, so just a pull through. Here's Here the attraction that Huntsville is famously known for. It's the Space and Rocket Center up ahead. And exit 15 here is the road that takes you over there. While 565 just gets a pull through to Interstate 65. And let us get a better view of the Space and Rocket Center because I actually have been there. Sadly, this is not my own personal picture, but this is a picture of the Space and Rocket Center here in Huntsville. And here's the exit for Alabama Highway 255, which is a shortcut over to US 72. And once again, 565 just gets a pull through for nothing. And here's a brand new exit here off of 565. This must be recently because when I lived up there, that exit does not exist. Neither did this baseball field. I might have to check it out if I ever go back to the Huntsville area. Another exit that reminds me of my nostalgic childhood is exit 9 here. I believe I remember going to the Cracker Barrel that's literally right off this exit and seeing some 565 signs, but I'm not entirely sure. Oh, we also have the mention of Exit 8 for the Huntsville International Airport coming up soon. Here's the exit for the Huntsville International Airport, and we just get another pull through for 565. Another nostalgic exit for me is Exit 7 for County Line Road. I remember being on this road a lot, especially going shopping at a Publix, which was closely near to the US 72 Junction and County Line Road Junction. I believe we also used it to get to the Huntsville International Airport one time, so that was pretty cool. And plus it's literally right on the border of Madison and Limestone County, the latter which I used to live in for a few years before moving away. And here's the ending to Interstate 565, and we're meeting Interstate 65, which gives time for Birmingham and Nashville, which are great choices. And apparently someone at Aldo may not understand the message because we're still getting a pull through for 565. Technically, this is for actually Alabama Highway 20 and US 72 alternate because, like I said, 565 ends here. A little ways down the road, we're now being with US Highway 31, but for some random reason, LDOT is not telling you this. And here we are crossing over the Tennessee River once again, and we get an awesome view of the city of Decatur, Alabama. Here is where US 72 alternate splits off from US Highway 31, and we're going to be heading west towards Florence. And our, uh, at signage outside of Decatur, we're now signed for Tuscumbia and Florence, which I think are good choices. Here in the Florence area, we're meeting with US 72 proper once again, and we're now signed west for Corinth and Tuscumbia, which I think are good choices. We got another request, this one was made by At Work Station, he wanted to see Alabama Highway 247. The reason why he wanted to see it is because it leads over to Rattlesnake Saloon, where he does karaoke at that place every Thursday night. So that's gotta be fun, and thank you for the request. Here is the Natchez Trace Parkway, and we actually get a mileage sign here too, we get Yucca on the top line, and Corinth on the bottom line. Good choices, Alabama. And we're now entering into the state of Mississippi, so let's see what Mississippi has to offer. And we still get Yucca on the top line and Corinth on the bottom line, so alright. Here we are, meaning US Highway 45 in Corinth, and 45 gets signed north for Jackson. And if you saw my original US 72 video, US 45 get, also gets signed south for Tupelo. And here on US 45, US 72 is now signed for Memphis, which is a great choice because there's literally nothing in northwestern uh, Mississippi. 
And we get a one-liner for just Memphis. So that is awesome, Mississippi. And we get another mileage sign, and we still get Memphis as our primary. With a secondary of Mount Pleasant, too. And we are now entering into Tennessee again. What? That is unique. Here in Tennessee, we're meeting with Interstate 269, and they get signed for Arlington and for Tunica, Mississippi. Huh, I did not know that there was an Arlington, Tennessee. The more you know. Here we are meeting with Tennessee Highway 57, right in front of this O Charlie's here. Man, I have not been to an O Charlie's in who knows how long. The one here in Cary closed up like a long time ago, and apparently the one in, up in Fredericksburg also closed, which is pretty sad. Anyways, here in Memphis, we're meeting with Interstate 240, and it's signed East for Nashville and West for Jackson, Mississippi, which are good choices. And then at the unceremonious end of US 72, we're meeting with US 64, 70, and 79. Sadly, TDOT does not give us any end of US 72 shield like they do on eastbound 72 over in Chattanooga. So with that, we end US 72 and move on to all of the places I'll go. So these are all the places I'd visit if I ever was on US 72 and 76 westbound once again. First, I'd like to revisit Wilmington. It was a really cool city when I went there last summer. I'd also like to revisit Chadbourne and go to its annual strawberry festival. I'd love to visit downtown Florence because the only area of Florence I've been to is the Bucky's. I'd also like to visit downtown Columbia. I'd also like to visit Clemson and this, both the city and the university. It's only an hour away from my family who live in Greenville. And then I'd also like to visit uh, Chattanooga and visit Chasper. And then since I lived in the Huntsville area, I'd love to revisit that entire area up there. And I'd also like to visit Florence, Alabama, and Corinth, and the city of Memphis. So that ends US 72 and 76 westbound. Thank y'all so much for watching this episode on US Highway 72 and US 76. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about this, these two highways combined. And I hope you enjoyed that virtual tour to get to the Clemson Memorial Stadium. So with that, here are my next few highways. Next week, I'm going to be doing Florida A1A. And then I'm going to be doing another collab with Corn 437 on US 15 northbound. And then I'm also going to be doing a collab with the Xavier 456 on US 23 northbound. And finally, I'm going to be doing my own series on US Highway 19. So thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you all next week in Florida.